Hello and welcome to Legacy Television. I'm Jeremy Pearsons. We are so glad to have you tuned into this broadcast today. Today we're going to begin a new series of messages called Guarding the Heart. Now these messages came from here at Legacy Church in Green Mountain Falls, Colorado. And we're going to talk about the importance of protecting the heart, the most important part of us. And the Bible says that above all else, more than anything else you guard, guard your heart. So I want you to get ready today to find out what the Word of God says about your heart, what's going on in your heart, what's coming out of your heart, because it makes a difference in this life and how you live it. But before we get into the word, let me give you a quick update on some things going on here at Legacy Church and through the outreaches of Pearson's Ministries International. If you've been following the broadcast over the last number of weeks, you know that we have been involved in a plan to expand project. That's what the Lord gave us. He said, it's time to expand. And he gave us three directions to expand in. That's why we're expanding inside, outside, and worldwide. Now, let me tell you a little bit about that. We are expanding inside the building here at Legacy Church, creating some more room for our church family to come and fellowship with each other. But we're also expanding outside the building. There's some work that needs to be done in the roadways coming into the building and the parking lots to make this a good experience for people to come into church and safe for them and their family. But beyond that, we are also expanding worldwide. And that's, that's what this ministry and what you're watching right now, the outreach of Legacy Television, is all about. It's about serving another generation with the Word of God all over the world. And we've said this now for a long time about this church. It is a local church, but it has a global call. And you're a part of that right now. This, this television ministry coming to you wherever you are, that's a, that's a part of this thing reaching out all over the world. So now we are expanding that worldwide outreach of legacy television and legacy music. And the scripture the Lord gave us about our expansion comes from the book of Isaiah chapter 54, where he said in verse 2, enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. And he said, do not spare. Lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. That's what this expansion is all about, inside, outside, and worldwide. And we are enlarging in every one of these areas. And I want to give you an opportunity right now, before we get into the Word today, to sow into kingdom expansion, especially if there's some place in your own life, your family, your business, your ministry that God's calling you to expand in, the first thing you have to do is find some place in the kingdom to sow that kind of seed because every seed reproduces after its own kind. If you want to be a part of this plan to expand today, there's a number of ways you can do it. You can give online at pearsonsministries.com. All the information you need will be there. If you're watching inside the United States and you'd like to text your offering, you can do that by texting LTV and any dollar amount to the number 28950. If you're writing a check and you'd like to mail it, just use the address that you see right now on your screen. Make your check payable to Pearson's Ministries International. Father, we thank you for the giving of the people today. We receive it. We call them blessed and we thank you for expansion in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name. All right, let's get into the Word together, and I'll be back in just a moment. The psalmist said in Psalm 119, he said, I'm running hard after your commandments. You expand, you enlarge my heart. You enlarge my heart. It's one thing to desire to expand outwardly. I mean, we're talking about expanding a building. We're talking about expanding inside, outside, you know, paving new parking lot, putting in new entrance and turn lanes. All those things are great. They're all wonderful. Even expanding a worldwide outreach with, with new and improved new equipment, all those things are great. I believe the Lord would have us to have all those things. But there's expansion that's got to take place somewhere else first. The expansion of the heart is what has to happen first. The enlarging of the heart. Because everything God does for you, everything God wants to get to you, he's got to get it through your heart first. And like we've already said, if he can't get it in your heart, he can't get it in your hand. It's got to get through your heart first. And there's so many people that, like we've, like we've said, they want to fuss with you about the nature of God and the character of God and, and, and what God will do and what God won't do and the sovereignty of God. 
And it all boils down for so many people to what they have or haven't experienced. And they think, well, if I haven't experienced it, it must not be God's will. Or they think if somebody else didn't experience it, it must not be God's will. But the problem with that is that is allowing experience to limit expectation. Are you listening? We must never be guilty of letting experience, yours or somebody else's limit, be the limiting factor on what you will expect from God. Somebody else's experience is not the limiting factor of what you can expect. The Word of God paints a picture for what you can expect. But the question still remains, if it is God's will to do it, or if it is God's will for you to have it, and if he's big enough to do it, why don't you? Why don't I have it? Why, don't, why aren't we experiencing more of it? And we do ourselves and our families a huge disservice to shift the blame of that to God. It's not his fault. Just because somebody has failed to receive something is not his fault. It doesn't mean he didn't give it. Are you hearing me? So much of the time, the problem was in the heart. The heart wasn't expanded enough, enlarged enough to receive it. I'll hold your place right here. We'll look at this, but go to the book of Ephesians. And look at chapter 3, I believe. Just begin reading in verse 14. Ephesians 3, 14 says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you. So this is the Spirit of God praying through this man named Paul. And you can always go back to these, these Ephesian prayers, these prayers that were prayed in the New Testament, and you can pray these same things for you, for your own life, for your own family. Because if you'll be led in what you pray, and not just pray, I think my grandfather used to call it shotgun prayers, you know what a shotgun prayer is? Well, you know what a shotgun is, right? It's one blast that has a big, wide array, and it's like, surely we'll hit something. <laughs> well, people pray like that. People pray these big blasts of a prayer in hopes that something sticks. But we can be more precise in the way we pray. We can be spirit-led in how we pray. And if you'll listen as you pray or even before you pray, You'll hear the Spirit of God on the inside of you say, pray this. Now, why would he say, pray this? Well, one reason. He's saying, pray this so I can do this. He's saying, this is what I want to do in you. This is what I want to do for you or through you. But I need your cooperation with it. So you pray this so I can do this. And that's what's happening right here in these, in these verses. He said, I bowed my knees to the, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. And this is the prayer, that he would grant you, that he would give this to you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. So this is what he's saying, pray. Pray this so I can do this. Don't be, don't be confused. Don't wonder about the will of God. Find out from Scripture. Go to places in Scripture that say, this is the will of God for you. You don't have to be confused. He's saying, pray this. Why? Because evidently, this is what he wants to do. He wants to strengthen you on the inside. Where did, the, where did he say the strength was going to take place? In the inner man. He's not talking to him about putting on physical weight. He's not talking to him about building muscle mass on the outside. And folks, I wish you could pray for that. I wish all it took was faith to increase muscle. <laughs> but let me just tell you, I'm a living testimony. It takes more than just that. But he's talking to him about building strength on the inside. 
Or you could say it like this, getting bigger, right, on the inside. The same way somebody would get bigger on the outside. The same way they could enlarge. You can get bigger on the, on the outside. You know that. I know that. Most of us are not the same size we were 10, 15, 20 years ago. What happened? It changes. It can enlarge. And that's where I'll leave that. But on the inside, you can get bigger too. You can get bigger, you can get stronger, you can open up, you can widen up. Now listen to why he would have him pray this and why he wants to do this. That Christ, verse 17, may dwell in your heart through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able, he said, verse 18, to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge. How can you know something that passes knowledge? Because you're not dependent on experience. You're not dependent on your experience. You're not dependent on somebody else's experience or their lack thereof. You're not dependent on any of that. That's not the, limit, the, the limitation to what you can know. You can know something on the inside, and you can know it so well, you can know it so strong that your head's going, what, what, what? I don't get it. Tell me, tell me. And your spirit's just going, shut up. You'll get it later. <laughs> it's coming alive. Why? Because you can get bigger on the inside. Yes. You've got more capacity for more understanding, for more knowledge, for more revelation in your spirit than your brain could ever dream of having. Your natural mind, your natural understanding. But so many people, this is where they get hung up. They can't get past this thing, this eight pounds or whatever it is of brain matter, whatever, I don't know what it is. They just get hung up right there. Can't get out of the head and into the heart. Out of the head, into the heart. And he's praying that you and I would enlarge and get stronger on the inside. Why? So that Christ can dwell in you. So that he can dwell in you by faith. And so that, man, we read these words and we're like, oh yeah, that's good. No, listen. So that you know and comprehend. What's comprehend? It means you get it. You have this working understanding of it. Of what? The love of Christ. Now Satan has worked so hard to get these little, just these little sayings in your mouth over and over. And people say them and it sounds so good. We could never understand. Huh? Oh, we could never comprehend the love. That's not what that just said. He said, I pray that you would comprehend it. Now, I'm not saying as long as you live on this earth that you'll ever understand all of it, but why can't you know more about it today than you did yesterday? Why can't you live in a greater degree of it today than you ever, ha ever have before? And what about tomorrow? And what about the next day? And what if you just kept progressing and progressing and deepening and widening in your understanding of the love of God? Who would you be 10 years from now? Somebody else, I'll tell you that. Why? Because you increased your capacity to receive. Got bigger on the inside. Because you got more head knowledge. You memorized more scripture. No, the inside got bigger that you would know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. These are two different types of knowledge. We've already talked a little bit about it. But there's, there's knowledge, like, like we've said, book smart. But then there's knowledge that you press into that even if you haven't experienced it, you press to experience it. I don't know if I'm saying that the best way. Let me give you an example. This is how I've always seen it clearly. Let's say you're going to go on a trip and you're going to get on an airplane here in Colorado Springs or Denver and you're flying to the other side of the country or maybe somewhere else in the world. You're going to get on that airplane. I'm going to give you two choices in pilots. Option A, option B. Option A is 
uh, let's say this guy, he's a high time pilot. He uh, flew in the military. He's seen combat. He's got combat experience. He's been in every imaginable emergency situation, let's say. Uh, let's say that after he retired military, he went and flew commercially for another 15, 20 years. And this guy has, I don't know, 15, 18,000 hours in the cockpit of just every imaginable airplane you can think of. He's got tons of experience. That's option A. Option B is a guy who subscribes to like eight different airplane magazines. <laughs> and he's read airplane books. He's seen Top Gun like 12 times, <laughs> okay? He can point at airplanes and say, oh, yeah, that's a this 18 and that's a this 22 and this has that fuel capacity and this range. And he's got lots of knowledge. The only issue is he's never actually flown one. Who you want flying? Hmm? This guy's got tons of knowledge. I mean, he's read book after book. He can draw airplanes? <laughs> I know we're talking about not letting a lack of experience limit the expectation, but here's the reason why. If you will go ahead and expect, expect bigger than you've ever seen before, expect bigger and more than you've ever experienced or more than what mom and dad experienced or grandma and grandpa or generations back experienced, more than what your denomination experienced when you were growing up. If you will go ahead and expect it, that expectation will bring you to a place and it won't be long, you will experience it. Amen. You will have first-hand knowledge of something that cannot be understood with the natural mind. You'll be big enough on the inside to grasp it, to comprehend it. And what, again, what's he talking about? The love of God, which passes knowledge that you'd be filled. And here's where it gets real. That you would be filled with all the fullness of God. That's a lot of God. Can you see how we've just read over these things? Oh, well, praise the Lord. All the fullness of God. That's, that's good, brother. What's next? No, you missed it. All the fullness of God? That you'd be filled with that? You're looking at you going, how is there even room enough in here to, to fit all that? I mean, he's not just big. He's bigger than big. He's... The earth is his footstool. <laughs> he's, so, he's so big. He's definitively big. And he fits in here. How's that even possible? It's because you can be bigger on the inside than you are on the outside. People who knew Smith Wigglesworth, you may have heard that name before. He's a man who lived and preached. A man from the United Kingdom, he preached. Chris, what years was that? That was the 30s. Yeah, early 1900s. It's a, just a fireball, Holy Ghost man. Uh, went out, of, dropped out of school, I think at six years old, something like that, went to work in a factory. And never learned to read, never learned to write, but got radically saved and changed and became a preacher. And he was just kind of a gruff, rough guy, and which was fine. You know, he raised the dead, so be as gruff and rough as you want, I guess, as long as that's happening in your life and your ministry. But he was famous for saying, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. Amen. That's revelation. That's seeing yourself in a completely different light than most of the rest of this world sees themselves. Limited by what they can understand naturally, what they can do physically. I don't care how smart you are, naturally speaking, you will come to the end of it. You'll come to the end of what you can figure out naturally. I don't care how strong you are physically. You will come to the end of that. At some point, there is, there is a weight. There is an amount that you can't move. You can come to the end of physical strength. I don't care how strong you are financially. How much money's in the bank? Maybe it's more that's ever been. Great. You can come to the end of it. 
You can step up and face something that's bigger than what you have the ability to, to fix, to move, to do. But if you'll learn to live from the inside out, you'll find out that there is no limit to how wide you can expand on the inside, to how big you can get in your heart. Enlarge my heart. All that to say, as we stepped over into this plan to expand project, I saw that in the beginning of it, Lord, you've got to enlarge our heart. But just in the days and the weeks that have gone by since starting that, I see it even stronger now. The heart, it starts in the heart. When I say it, I mean life. Life itself comes out of here. And I'll go even one step further to say, if there's something wrong on the outside, most every time, the first place you need to look is what's going on inside. Is this a problem with something that's going on in my heart? Now, we're going to jump off into this together today, next week, and you start studying the heart in Scripture, there's no end to it. You could look at it probably from now until Jesus comes to get us, and you'd never exhaust this subject of the heart. It's massive. It's huge. But it is the place from which life flows. Go back to Proverbs where we started to look just a moment ago. It starts where? In the heart. Proverbs chapter 4. Everybody okay? Yes. Are you happy? Proverbs chapter 4, starting verse 20, he said, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them where? In the midst or in the middle of your heart. Now, if you go back and look at these verses, let me put the emphasis on a particular word in these scriptures and see if you can tell what I believe he's saying here. My son, give attention to my words. Can you hear that? My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them, well, what is them? My words, my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them, keep my words, keep my sayings in the middle of your heart. The reason I emphasize that is because you and I both know we're living in a world right now where you can hear from thousands of voices and they are coming at you day and night all the time. And if you just leave something switched on, you are never without an influence. You are never without a voice talking to you and how easily it would be to be so distracted in this life. And when there's that many voices coming at you, it can be hard to... to to differentiate, to, to make one distinct above another. That's why you got to shut some stuff off. This is why he's saying, hey, hey, my words. Pay attention to my words. And if you've got children, you know you got to do that sometimes. Depending on how long your lecture's going, you might have lost their attention a while back. And you're standing there preaching at them and something shiny is just over your shoulder and they got distracted at that. Hey, 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 hey. What do you got to do? Re-grab that attention. Come on, my words. Lock in on what I'm saying to you. My son, pay attention to my words. Not those, not every other voice, not every other opinion. Even those, those who you know, you love, you're close to them. Just because they got the same blood flowing in their veins that you do doesn't make them right. This is where you got to go for right words. This is where you have to go for truth. You can't just find it any old place. He's, coming, he's like, hey, 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 hey. Listen, boy. Listen, girl. My words. My sayings. Keep them in your eyes. Keep them in your ears. Why? Because whatever's going in your eyes and whatever's going in your ears, it's headed somewhere. It doesn't stop right there. Help me out. Where's it going? Heart. It's aimed at the heart. Keep my words in your heart. Keep my sayings in your heart. Why? Well, here's why. They're life. 
to those that find them. Now, his words are life, but they're not being everybody's life. Why? Because relatively few have actually found them. And finding's just the result of seeking. You find them because you sought them out. Their life to those that find them, their health to all their flesh. The word of God is life. The word of God is health. The word of God is medicine. But it's not being everybody's life and health and medicine. Why not? Because they hadn't found them. They're busy, busy listening to every other voice out there. Got the volume jacked up on every other voice except the one that actually can do something, that can actually minister life, that, act, that can actually bring health. But if you keep them in your heart, there'll be life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Now with that in mind, you can see why he says this in verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. At Legacy Church, we believe the most important thing you will do with your life any day is spend time with God and in His Word. His Word has the ability to produce results in your life that nothing else and no one else can do. So I encourage you today, get the Word, just like you've done right now. You've spent the last few minutes with us together getting the Word of God into your heart. Then what do you do? You become a doer of it and it will produce results. And this ministry is about one thing above all else and it's helping get the word of God to you. We are called to serve our generation with God's word. And that's why we've got a number of ways and different platforms that all exist to do that one thing. Get the word of God into your life. You can get uh, these messages that we minister. You can get them through this broadcast that you're watching right now. You can get it through the podcast. We've got a couple of different podcasts available to you. The Pearson's Ministries podcast where we've got full-length sermons. Or the Legacy Television audio podcast where you can get just the portion that you've heard today or on previous broadcasts. That's available to you. Also, the Pearson's Ministries website is a great place to go and, and check out all the archived messages from months and months and years back and just get stocked up on the Word of God. There are answers in that for you. So we've got our broadcast, our podcast, our website, and we've also got an app that's available to you for free, the Legacy Studios app, where you can access all of these messages, different ministry materials. But listen, all of it exists for one reason, to get the word into your life. And like I've said, and I'll say it again, the most important thing you will do today or any day of your life is spend time with God, spend time in his word. There's so much power on his word and in his word. The Bible tells us it's not just some book this thing is alive and it's able, it's able to do things in you that nothing else can do. So that's what this ministry is all about, serving you with the word of God. We pray you are blessed by what you heard today. I encourage you to put it in practice and watch our good God do good things in your life in Jesus name. We'll see you next time on Legacy TV.